If I expect someone to die this soon, it's definitely not Dewey's. And I definitely didn't expect Uncle Lou to pull the trigger. But like Kanan's narration said in episode 1, Uncle Lulu is Raquel's right hand man. So if she wants things done, he's the one to do it and he does it right. But let's see if Uncle Lulu got things done right this time around or not. What's up YouTube, it's your boy Nino and I'm back with another power video. Raising Kanan episode 2 is out. In this video, I'm going to talk about how Wii's death was all set up and how everyone has an alibi just in case they start any investigations. Also, I'll show you guys how Uncle Lou can explain this pickup scene to Jukebox when the news breaks that Wiz is dead. Also, you get to find out how Kanan passed his father's test in this situation. So, the street made a warning move on Kanan again at this scene where we all thought there was going to be another hit on Kanan. But luckily, it was just a warning and Raquel definitely understood so she moved to Nick and he told her about the fact that the street is really hungry for a body. This gave Raquel the pressure to really probe into which of the kids in Kanan's crew was involved in shooting Buck and who provided a gun they used. How is Raquel going to figure out who really among Kanan's crew was also involved in the shooting without Kanan knowing her moves? The ultimate thing Raquel needs from Kanan at this moment is his ability to listen to her and follow her orders. That was why she made Uncle Marvin took Kanan to isolation, hence using Def Con, Kanan's real father's method of introduction into the game. Now the search has started. Raquel and Uncle Lou bumped into Famous and Wheeze. So they started a mind game with Famous whereby Lou was talking about Famous saying hi to his sister. All this was to push Famous to say something they want to hear. But at this point, we started scratching his head in fear and Rack noticed. So she stopped Lou from what he was saying to Famous and she started questioning D about his mom. Unfortunately for D, he ended up saying his brother just got out of jail not long ago. And that very moment, there was an eye contact between Rack and Lou. This alone shows that Kanan got the gun from Wiz who possibly got it from his corn brother's things. The math at this point was clear enough for Rack to know that Wiz was part of the shooting. While all this was going on, Uncle Marvin was playing the other side of the setup by sending Kanan to the hideout. For D. Wiz to be killed, they need Kanan out of sight, Jukebox out of sight, and everyone must have an alibi. Now, Rack wanted to confirm her hypothesis about Wiz, so what did she do? She asked Kanan about it and when she realized Kanan started smelling something, she quickly said she's not looking for trouble for D and that she just wants to be sure they are all checking for each other. Then Kanan said in a quote, yes ma'am, my crew is holding me down. After she confirmed her hypothesis, Rack told her brothers she doesn't want Kanan anywhere near the street and she asked Marvin if his party was going to come on and he said yes. Then she spoke in code to Lou to set Wee's plan in motion where she told him to get his Reggie Jackson on. Clearly, Marvin has no clue what was going to happen during his party since Raquel doesn't really trust him with sensitive issues like this. When he asked Rack about what Reggie Jackson had to do with his party, she told him it was work. Now, Marvin not knowing anything about this will give him a good alibi when police come asking questions about Dewey's death. For Wiz to get a reason to come out of his house at night, it has to be a call from Kanan to do something they both love. And for this plan to work, Kanan has to stay at one place which is the house. So Wiz on his way to Kanan to watch the movie, Uncle Lou was right there waiting for him. He lied to him about Kanan and sent him to his brother's party. But here is one key thing. Jukebox saw them and this particular scene can be either an alibi or an evidence. Lou gave Wiz his last moment. Marvin started a fight in front of the club and Lou shot Wiz in the head. Now, Wiz's body is going to be a trade for Kanan's life as the shooter who killed Buck 20. But how did Raquel play this out without putting suspicion on anybody? This is where the alibis come to play. One, at the time all these were happening that night, Raquel was having a good time with Bosket. Even though Bosket wanted to take things slowly, Raquel knew she has to make her move not to look suspicious by just having dinner with him after setting some kid up to die. So she insisted and they had sex. Now Busket will automatically give Raquel an alibi if suspicion arises. Now secondly, Marvin ended up fighting at the club and he ended up being arrested so definitely he couldn't have been at the crime scene or have anything to do with the killing. So in this case, Uncle Marvin is also safe from suspicion by Kanan and the police. Kenan took the advice his mother gave him by using his own father's example of first process into the game by staying home. Now, 
Canaan has two different alibis when it comes to worse. One is, Davina met him that night in front of his house where he told her he and Wiz were supposed to watch movie that night but he called him like twice and still he hasn't showed up. With this, Davina will serve as a witness for Canaan with the fact that he has nothing to do with Wiz's death. Secondly, he called Wiz's mother to find out if Wiz was at home which I presume she asked him and I quote, he said he was coming to you, unquote. That is why Kanan said, word. Now, if K is not thinking, Kanan could be accused of setting his friend up to be killed. Now, Uncle Lulu is the one who pulled the trigger as we all know, but how possible can he get an alibi when he was spotted living with Wiz by Jukebox? Can Jukebox do the math after the news break that Wiz was shot? Will she suspect Uncle Lou for killing Wiz? Well, this is what I think. In as much as Jukebox saw Wiz in Uncle Lou's car, it doesn't mean anything since Wiz wasn't forced into the car. So it can only mean that he was following Uncle Lou somewhere. Now, this is a smart way I think Uncle Lou can defend himself from this issue should he be suspected by Jukebox, Kanan, or the police. He can say he was on his way to the party and Wiz said he was interested even though he was going to Kanan to watch movie. But he decided to change his mind and go to the party instead. And this is why he, Uncle Lou, Give him a ride since he was also going to the same place. Now, if a question like, so what happened after the club pops up? Uncle Luke can possibly say, well, he saw Wiz with some girl during the party, so he decided to leave to use the phone. And besides, Wiz is an adult and he, Lou, doesn't need to babysit him. He offered him a ride to the party and that was all. Now, the question of the day is, will Jukebox tell Kanan what she saw? Will Kanan be able to do the math on all the events that happened that day to determine if his mom or uncle had anything to do with Wiz's death. I doubt that would be easy for Kanan to figure out because Raquel played her cards very tightly with no loopholes. Now, will Raquel use this to her benefit? I believe so because this might possibly earn her some corners back. Raquel can decide to pin this on Nick's crew as the ones who hit back at Kanan's crew member. Hence, a body for a body or else they will go for war. Also, this case would definitely draw Nick one step back since the detective warned him not to drop any body of a kid again so that he can help him to sit on the throne in the drag game. If Rack play her cards well, trust me, she can earn more power and control over even Nick's territories. Let me know your thoughts about this second episode. Let me know what you are thinking. Let me know if you are also disappointed in the fact that Wiz died so early. Trust me, I wasn't expecting his end anytime soon. But then, this is the card Rack has played. Share your comments, share your thoughts. What do you think? Do you think this is going to bring war? Share your thoughts with me in the comment section. Let me know what you are thinking about this second episode of Raising Canaan. If you like this video and if you are new to my channel, kindly hit the subscribe button for more power related videos and share, like, leave your comments and let's get interactive. I'll see you in my next video. Thanks for watching.